It's time for the visit with the person of high strangeness. Um, I'm not sure, but I think I started off with my trademark cough, and I'd like to let you know that I probably be coughing out this program, um, and uh, because I'm having a little problem again. A few weeks ago, we did a series of three shows on remote viewing, and at that time, I thought maybe that might be all we're going to do at that uh, on that subject. But in the meantime, as sometimes it happens, uh, something else fell out of the sky, so to speak. And so today we have some friends from out of state that came uh, to visit. And so we're going to tackle a subject that is somewhat related to remote viewing. Um, and I'm sure that will become clear somewhere along the line. And it's going to deal with China's super uh, psychics. And we thought that might uh, be fun for you. now. I'm going to introduce my guest, and as always, I'm going to really try to pronounce Slavka's. I did it, Slavka. <laughs> and, um, and Oliver, and you are familiar with Oliver, just to refresh your memory, and how are you? I'm doing pretty good today. Thanks, mm -hmm. Louie. And it, I take it, it, how long did it t take you to get here from? Uh, a couple days. It's a couple long drive. Days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not snow in the mountains yet, is it? No, oh, no. Good. Yeah. It was pretty nice. But we really appreciate you, you know, you coming all that way. And so, are you tired too? No, I'm fine. You're fine? Yeah. yeah. Well, we're not fine. We're exhausted mm -hmm. because mm. we are uh, we reconstructing um, the glass room for the house that fell in the hole. So we are all pretty, pretty tuckered out. So. Um, the other thing I wanted to bring to everybody's attention that we have planned on doing a, another show okay. called Modern Psychic. Uh, I'm sorry, Modern Mysteries, no? Right. And so uh, somewhere along the line, if we could get that clip, I'm really excited. I just got the, uh, the opening clip for it, and I want to share that with you. And um, how is this? It's going to be available eventually? Yeah, the people will be able to purchase copies of the program um, from modernmysteries.tv or from mm -hmm. your website, Sigeria.com. Yeah. And that's a little, you know, by the time this airs, maybe we're up and mm -hmm. running, so we'll be really excited about that. Uh, so, Oliver, tell me, how are we going to get from all of that to the to the super psychics, you want to tackle that? Sure. Um, Any time we're ready to show that insert, maybe we want to do that first and then. Okay. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been to Olympia before? Yes, I have one time. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I liked it very much. Do you? Yes. Yeah. Are you from a different country? I yes, I am. I am from outside the United States, from Slovak Republic, which is mm -hmm. Eastern Europe. So uh, America's pretty interesting, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. And I have been here for about a year and a half. A year and a half, yeah. So how, so how are we doing on the clip? I'm getting an OK here, so let me be quiet so you can enjoy this opening for the new show, Modern Mysteries. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. There it is. That is so exciting. I really like yeah. that. Yeah, in fact, I'm going to play it again next week so okay. everybody can sort of get familiar with the music, you know. So, would you like to lead us into the. Yes, well, this book um, kind of culminated a six month journey for me that uh, started with a very unusual experience where I. Uh, Suddenly one day I was in my office and I started experiencing an extreme degree of anger, um, rage, frustration. Uh, my head hurt. 
Um, all of the electronics in our office stopped working. Couldn't get a computer to work, couldn't get a printer to work. Uh, the phones were weird. And it became apparent to me that something unusual was happening. And uh, <clears throat> I talked to some friends of mine who are also um, what one could call sensitive, people who do remote viewing, people who are psychic, and found that a number of people in the United States had had the same type of experience within uh, about two weeks of each other. In one case, uh, a friend of ours, his clock actually jumped ahead by eight hours. The, mm -hmm. the minute hand started acting like the second hand, and all of the electronics in his house were fried. His phone, he said, literally smelled burnt. Um, mm -hmm. And he also experienced uh, just an extreme degree of anger. Um, Lynn Buchanan, one of the people you featured on your show also, mm -hmm. he reported um, feeling extremely angry one day and having a lot of problems with his computers. And he felt so angry he just had to go outside and the wind was blowing, so then all of a sudden he just got furious at the wind. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So something strange had happened, so I decided I would try to find out what caused it, what mm -hmm. happened. Um, so I through a mutual friend, um, got the phone number for a scientist named um, Thomas Bearden. Mm -hmm. who, yeah, uh, defense are familiar with Thomas Bearden. Right, who oh. has developed some very interesting technology for the military. And when I described the symptoms to him, he said, oh, well, you've been whacked with an electron interferometry device. And I said, mm -hmm. oh. Can you repeat that? Electron interferometry. Okay. And uh, he said there was only as far as he knew, four devices like that in the world. Um, uh, is, is there any way you can explain to us what they consist of? It's an electronic um, subtle energy weapon. Um, what it does is it uh, works between time space. It's independent of time space, which is one reason why it affects electronics, why it can affect a clock, um, mm -hmm. and it's used um, as a weapon. It's a form of mind control um, and it's uh, extremely powerful. Mm -hmm. So you said there's only four of those? That's what Thomas Bearden said, mm -hmm. but he said, well, apparently someone else has got one. He said the, the Russians had one, the uh, Chinese had one, the Japanese Yakuza, the J Mafia had mm -hmm. one, and he suspected that uh, probably the Americans had one. But he said mm -hmm. it was extremely expensive, and he couldn't understand why, you know, someone like me would be, you know, Except, the target of that. Yeah. yeah. Um, because it was usually limited to extremely, you know, important and high-profile targets. Mm -hmm. He said it was very expensive to build and very expensive to operate. Um, so I thought, well, okay. Um, then I started talking with some of my friends, and there were some remote viewing sessions done, and. China and North Korea kept coming up as the possible source for uh, the attack. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to interrupt mm -hmm. you here to remind the friends when, uh, when we talk about remote view and what that consists of is that um, numerable targets are being given mm -hmm. and then people will access that by remote viewing and then in a very protocol way. Uh, yeah, it's a very scientific uh, procedure. Ana yeah, analyze, mm -hmm. look at it, and it's compared and mm -hmm. yeah, and typically and sort it out. Right. Mm -hmm. um, a question can be a remote viewing target. You can mm -hmm. write down a question. You know, describe the source of this electronic attack, okay. or describe the source of the events which occurred to so and so at, on this date at this time. Um, that is then put into an envelope and another person who doesn't know what's in the envelope then assigns a random eight-digit number. Then okay. another person then gives that target number to the viewer, so mm -hmm. that way it's double-blind. Um, yeah, double-blind, yeah. We, we okay. had um, the late Gab Gabriel Penningale. Penningale. She had mm -hmm. explained how that works, and, uh, and then the, the viewers it's all done independently, they right. blind. So one doesn't yeah. know what the other one is doing. Yeah, and it's best if <laughs> each viewer is separated by physical distance and mm -hmm. doesn't know the other person. So that way there's <coughs> no... We're not speaking oh. loud enough? No, it's your mic. My mic? Yeah. Oh, God, I'm rubbing on you again. I'm sorry. So 
I'm sorry. That's okay. We, we can do that sometimes. Thank you. All right. Um, Is that better? Cool. Otherwise, there's the opportunity for you know people to get together to share notes mm -hmm. and say, well, what did you get? I got this. Um, or if people know each other, there's also the opportunity for telepathic overlay. Right. Um, there's always the opportunity for telepathic overlay, but those chances are reduced if the, if the viewers don't know each other and if they're right. cast independently at different times. Um, yeah, so, so to bring it back to where you was, I mm -hmm. just want to inlay that is so that the information arrived in, the, in that fashion is really accurate. Yes, yeah. um, and the, the protocols, the whole procedure yeah. was first developed at Stanford Research Institute as part of a government funded project. Yes, all right. Although actually originally um, some of the funded came from the Church's Chicken. Church's Fried Chicken, yeah. Uh, the Church of Scientology was also behind some of the original work as well, but then after that the uh, the federal government took over the funding and the control of the program. But uh, <clears throat> so we started looking in that direction once the North Korea China thing started coming up, mm -hmm. and uh, we started doing research into Chinese military um, psychic ability and the Chinese psychic ability in general, um, and we found that there were some. Chinese-looking people that were tuning into us. Um, then I got whacked again, mm -hmm. um, and then once more, and the last time affected me very profoundly. I mm -hmm. couldn't even stand up. Um, I felt very dizzy. Um, I had to lay down. But then I got this stream of images that kept coming to me. Mm -hmm. Apparently, maybe something had gone wrong with their equipment, but I was getting a direct signal from whoever was, was trying to attack me. <laughs> and the images that I got were, there was a, a room, and inside the room there was a one female who was in charge, then there was a, another woman who was sitting at a computer, and she had inside of her computer file on a number of people. They would bring up the file on each targeted person, and then they would somehow convert that into a signal that we would, they would then feed mm -hmm. into this black box. Then the black box would then go to this cable and then there would be a man who would stand on this dielectric, uh, you know, electrically insulated circle and then would, in front of him there would be a video screen with an image of the person. He mm -hmm. would tune into the person, point this gun-like thing at the image and then he would project um, his own emotion which he would use anger, rage. He would get very, very angry, and then he would, and basically, it was like he was hijacking the person's personality. Um, uh, is, I saw, I saw a talk by, I think the man's name was Elton Bird. Yeah, Elton Bird. Is, is that s uh, similar to what he explained? Mm, some of it, yeah. He's, dis he's discussed a wide range of different mind control technologies. Mm -hmm. um, this one is similar to radionics device. Radionics, yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, 